So what can we expect with new Mac releases in 2025? Might actually be an interesting year for Mac fans, not least because those who bought into the M1 generation now have machines that are more than three years old. So you might be starting to think about upgrading. And if that's you, what are you looking forward to? Now, Apple is widely expected to update the MacBook Air with the M4 chip. I'm recording this mid-January and some industry insiders believe it could happen any time between now and March. Currently, Apple is selling 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs with the M3 chip, but they do also sell a 13 inch M2 model, all of them now coming with 16 gigs of RAM as standard. But that cheaper last generation model does raise a question. Once the M4 MacBook Air models are released, will they now make the 13 inch M3 that cheaper entry level model? Possibly not. It may well be that that cheaper model does stay with the M2 chip. After all, Apple is still producing M2 chips and they had a few production issues with M3, so they may well leave things as they are. For me, the Mac Studio is the release that I'm most looking forward to, particularly since it hasn't been updated since the M2 generation. Now that could actually happen any time in the first half of the year, but it wouldn't surprise me to see a release at WWDC, which is usually around June time. The base Mac Studio should get the M4 Max, and we've already seen what a brilliant performer that is. But we're also assuming that there will be some sort of M4 Ultra chip. And if Apple does what it has done previously, basically stitching two Max chips together, that's going to be a bit of a beast. And it'll mean for the first time we'll see an Apple Silicon Mac with enough graphics compute power to be knocking on the door of Nvidia's RTX 4090 in some areas. But don't assume that stitching two chips together gives you double the performance. There are some overheads to think about. But if we look at the scaling of the previous generations, we might be able to tentatively predict performance numbers. The M4 Max already scores over 25,000 in the Geekbench 6 multi-core test, and that is pretty incredible. But an M4 Ultra might be scoring in the region of 37,000. Now, I'm just speculating, of course, but if true, that would be a lot of performance. Remember, of course, that Geekbench is a synthetic benchmark, and in the real world, performance will vary. Not many applications will be able to make use of all those threads, but it will certainly be an extremely capable pro-level workstation. And if we take the Geekbench 6 GPU score for the Metal Framework, the M4 Max already scores an impressive 195,000, but an M4 Ultra could push this close to 290,000. It's a, a huge amount of graphics power, and if it all fits in the power-sipping, near-silent Mac Studio, I can see it being a popular choice for pros who need that kind of top-tier performance. Now, of course, there are PC workstations that can do more, but if Apple maintains the same pricing as the current Mac Studio, I think this is going to compare favorably, especially when it comes to performance per watt. And drawing those comparisons with top-tier PC graphics cards is inevitable, but they're not directly comparable. There are areas where the Mac will win, video editing probably, and areas where an NVIDIA card would be top dog, like AI and machine learning, for example. And it's not likely that the M4 Ultra chip is going to move the needle much for Mac gaming. This will be an expensive computer, and you'll still be better off with a gaming PC. But if you're buying one of these Mac Studios for professional work, and you get to play some AAA games in your free time, well, that's a nice thing to have. Even with the lack of upgradability, it's a compelling package especially now with the addition of Thunderbolt 5. Those increased transfer rates open the door to ludicrously fast external storage and also to external PCI Express card enclosures. Why go to the expense of a non-upgradable Mac Pro when you could invest in a PCIe enclosure for your cards and connect it to your Mac Studio with one cable? And that brings us to the Mac Pro. It honestly seems like an afterthought at this point, a legacy from the Intel days you pay a huge additional premium to get some PCI Express slots that are compromised due to the limited number of PCI Express lanes that are available. And of course, you can't use any of those slots for GPUs or video accelerators. Professionals are using these slots for niche controller cards and for storage. And as we just said, you could do that for less with a Mac Studio and a PCIe enclosure. But on the other hand, Apple has all the tooling for the chassis. These Mac Pros do still sell, and it wouldn't be too much trouble for them to put a new M4 Ultra in it. And that, along with Thunderbolt 5, 
might improve the functionality, perhaps also improve the number of PCI Express lanes, and that would make the Mac Pro a more compelling purchase. If we do get a new Mac Pro, well, tradition suggests that we would see it at WWDC, but it could equally turn up in the second half of the year. And then towards the end of the year, we'll expect to see the M5 announced, and presumably that will go into the MacBook Pro range first of all. Or what about a larger iMac with M4 Pro? That's been talked about plenty, but it's probably a long shot. If Apple does it, there's no doubt it would sell, but an M4 Pro Mini with a studio display is perhaps a more flexible pairing. And speaking of that display, and also the more expensive 6K Pro Display XDR, might we see an update to those this year? Again, perhaps at WWDC? With Thunderbolt 5 comes the additional bandwidth that would allow higher refresh rates. So could we see a studio display with an updated chip, Thunderbolt 5, and ProMotion? That would be nice. With Apple Silicon Max, Apple has locked itself into a really aggressive upgrade cycle. And arguably, it's its own fault, because with the release of M1, it lit a fire under the PC chip makers. And they've been working very hard to catch, and in some cases, surpass Apple's efforts. It's really interesting to see the likes of AMD starting to use unified memory on their latest chips that have integrated GPUs. And both AMD and Nvidia are looking to AI to leverage gaming performance through upscaling and AI frame generation. Nvidia's newly announced 50 series cards lean heavily on those things. Apple keeps talking about gaming, so it will be interesting to see what they do to try and catch up. So expect some talk about that at WWDC. And of course, we have the continued rollout of Apple intelligence to look forward to, or not, as the case may be. But it will be an interesting year for the Mac. So is there something you're looking forward to? Or maybe you've got some top predictions to share. Why not leave a comment below and then save the video so we can come back and mark our prediction skills after the releases. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.